Welcome to the third and final week of Love Welter 22. After a well-earned rest day on Monday, the riders are gearing up for stage 16 between San Lucar de Barameda and Tomares. Remco Avenapool lost a bit of time to his rivals in the mountains this weekend, but he still leads the race by a minute and 34 seconds. Tomares hosted a stage finish in 2017, with Matteo Trentin taking one of his four victories at that edition. It's another one for the punchy sprinters, and on paper, Mads Pedersen is the man to beat. I think uh, you did this final in 2017 or 18, so of course we watched the last kilometers and uh, it's a tricky final with, uh, with a good good kick and then so hopefully it fits me well. Yeah, every day we keep fighting to get more and more points and then uh, hopefully I can still have it on Sunday in Madrid. Il est très fort, il a peut-être laissé plus d'énergie que moi les, le dernier week-end parce qu'il voilà, il est beaucoup à l'attaque pour défendre son, son maillot vert, il est très fort mais j'espère que, que pourquoi pas les, les niveaux se sont un petit peu nivelés et, euh, et pouvoir euh, voilà, jouer d'égal à égal aujourd'hui avec lui. Several fast men have come close to victory at this Vuelta and this is their penultimate chance to take stage honours before the traditional sprint in Madrid on Sunday. Yeah, I think today is one of the last chances. It's today and on Sunday, so we have to work for it. And I think the shape is good of everybody. And we still have some sprinters left, so we can work together to get a sprint. And the final will be not easy because there are small hills in, so it will be a special sprint today. Today I know how long it is from the last corner, so I hope today the timing will be perfect. I'm ready for this week. One more week left and not much left of the season as well, so extra motivation to finish it off well. I think the finish suits me, there's no doubt about that, but yeah, we'll have to again, have to see how it goes, you know. We uh, hoping it's you know it's controlled so the break comes back, but it might be uh, might be a breakaway day, who knows. Stage 16 is a flat outing of 189 kilometers in Andalusia, heading from the coastline to the outskirts of Sevilla. There are no categorised climbs, but like on stage 13 to Montilla, there are some lumps and bumps in the final, which could prove too much for the pure sprinters. The wind could also be a factor late in the day. One hundred and forty-two riders have made it through to this final week, with two non-starters today, Esteban Chavez and Maxim van Gils. Two men were on the attack straight away, Luis Angel Mate and Ander Okamika. The two Spaniards quickly opening up a three-minute gap. Trek Segafredo and Cofidis were pulling in the peloton for Pedersen and Brian Cocker, but the average speed was fairly tame, around 38 kilometers an hour. Mate from the Uscatella Scardi team wasn't only looking to give his team a bit of screen time today, he is also riding to raise awareness of some key environmental issues. The 38-year-old has promised to plant a tree for every kilometer he spends in the breakaway at this Vuelta after his home region of Sierra Bermeja was ravaged by wildfires last year. Bueno, creo que es necesario ser conscientes de que nos enfrentamos a una crisis sin precedente en la en la historia de la humanidad, que es el calentamiento global, el cambio climático, y nosotros los ciclistas tenemos una responsabilidad especial. Tenemos el mejor vehículo para liderar ese cambio que tenemos que tener como sociedad, que es la bicicleta. Eh, como siempre digo, tenemos el estadio más bonito del mundo. Hoy es Cantabria, mañana Asturias, pasado mañana París. Y las bicicletas cambiarán el mundo. The gap remaining steady at three minutes with over 90k still to ride. Okamika in the purple colours of Burgos BH has become a familiar face at this Vuelta. This is his fourth breakaway since the start of the race. He went up the road in the Netherlands on stage three, then on his home roads in the Basque Country on stage four, and more recently on the road to Montilla last Friday. The 29-year-old has now spent over 500 kilometres in breakaways. He came late to professional cycling, switching over from triathlon during the pandemic and earning a contract with Burgos in 2021. Well, little by little, the peloton began to increase the pace, though they didn't want to make the catch too early. With a couple of small climbs and a real uphill kick to the finish line, this wouldn't necessarily just be a stage for the puncher sprinters. 
When Trentin won five years ago, there were several GC favourites inside the top ten. Vincenzo Nibali, the eventual winner of the race, Chris Froome, Wilco Kelderman and Alberto Contador. Would it be a similar story today? Well, before finding that out, a few riders were struggling to stay focused. The gap dropping to under two minutes with 50k to go. And the bunch finally going over 40 kilometers an hour in the fourth hour of racing, with the brakes advantage now down to a minute. Mate and Okamika rolling through the intermediate sprint before Pedersen snaffled another 15 points from the peloton. The breakaway was finally over with just under 14 kilometers remaining and heading into a tricky final, the GC leaders were jostling for position. Primoz Roglic decided to unleash a late attack just as Remco Evenepoel was held up by a mechanical. The defending champion getting a small gap and going clear with four of the pre-stage favourites. Let's get set for the finish. It's Roglic, Pedersen, Ackerman, Van Poppel and Wright. As Roglic goes for time, what he won't know is that the red jersey has had a puncture and may be given the same time anyway. So let's see how this goes. It's Pedersen who opens up the sprint. Pedersen in the green jersey. Ackerman is there. And oh! Roglic crashes, Roglic crashes, Pedersen takes the stage, Ackerman second, Van Poppel and Fred Wright, and Roglic crashes in the finish straight, having taken time. What an incredible finish to today's stage. Well, the story of the day was that late battle for the red jersey, providing a dramatic ending to what had been a rather sleepy stage. Roglic looked to have caught Evenepoel out in the final until that crashed just before the line. The three-time champion hasn't been spared this season. He also suffered a nasty crash on stage five of the Tour de France, and it remains to be seen whether he'll be able to keep going in tomorrow's 17th stage. As for Pedersen, he took his second win of this Vuelta in some style. The Dane says that he hopes that Roglic can bounce back. It's a, it's a pity that he crashed. He's, uh, he hasn't been lucky this year, and uh, I hope it's not too bad so he can keep uh, contending for the, for the victory of the Welter. Everyone was really on the limit, and Ackerman was straight in his wheel, really good job, and I had to use a lot of energy to close him, but uh, it was a really good move. Pedersen's hot streak continues as he picks up his eighth win of 2022. The former world champion comfortably beating Ackerman, Van Poppel and Wright, with Roglic given the same time as the top four in spite of finishing 35th. Evenepoel was given the same time as the second group. He only lost eight seconds to the Slovenian. He remains a minute and 26 seconds clear overall. Pedersen is cruising to victory in the green jersey competition with a huge lead of 220 points over Wright. Jay Vine had a quieter day. He is still 29 points ahead of Richard Carapace in the mountains classification. Mount Evenepoel didn't lose any time in the white jersey standings. He's still almost five minutes ahead of Juan Ayuso. There's a bit of a classics feel to Wednesday's 17th stage between Aracena and the Monasterio de Tentudia. It finishes with a climb of over 10 kilometers at 5%. The question is, will Roglic have recovered enough to keep fighting for red with Evenepoel?